What's going on internet? IG back again today. Today we're going to be taking a look at a deconstruction of GNOME desktop. Now what do I mean by that? I mean that the vanilla version of the GNOME desktop has is polarizing to say the, to say the least. Um, there are some strong design principles behind it in terms of how humans uh, want to be able to use computers but at the same time there seems to be this uh, competition that's going on between uh, GNOME and also then the power users that want to be able to tweak and tinker and be able to use a desktop that's familiar and productive to them. So for that case study, we're going to be using Pingai OS 18.04. As this version, it's a derivative of Ubuntu, it represents a, a one man's vision, Anthony Norman's vision for what the GNOME desktop is capable of and what feels most productive for him. Now I'm going to be using this as a base to kind of talk about some of the stuff that GNOME is doing right, but also some of the stuff that it's clear the community want to be able to see in a powerful desktop environment, uh, at, at least one element of that community which is the power users. Um, because on, honestly, while Ping iOS um, on its website, you know, claims uh, like a lot of other Linux distros that it's user friendly and, and all of that kind of stuff, really it's it all depends on what we're used to. Um, and so for a power user and, and speaking personally, I've used Ping iOS before in the past and I've enjoyed it for what it is. Um, and just to give a bit of context, I am running the mini version, which basically gives you all of the tweaks and tools that Ping iOS provides, but without all of the applications uh, choices made for you. Um, so it's got all the apps stripped out, but the tweaks and tools left in. Okay, that was a really long introduction, but let's jump into a deconstruction of GNOME in 2018. All right, so as a distribution, first of all, I'm just going to cover off some quick checkboxes before we move on. Um, the Pingai OS uh, distribution, it is based on GNOME 3.28 uh, and Ubuntu 18.04. It's pretty straightforward. Now, I have um, fully updated uh, this version uh, in terms of the packages that it's running. Um, and the one thing that I will mention about Pingai is that if you're a fan of minimalism or uh, you don't want something pre-configured for you, then this is definitely not the place to be. Um, but the reason I'm using this and jumping into this distribution is to uh, kind of tease out some points that I've noticed uh, of contention in the Linux community when it comes to GNOME desktop and how it functions. Okay, so first of all, we're going to start with um, with what you presented with first, the, the desktop. Now, what I will say is that the default file manager in uh, in Ping iOS is Nemo. It is not uh, Nautilus. And again, this is reflection. This is a reflection of the developer's choice to try and give the user some more options. So when we jump into the file manager, for example, we're just going to do that by jumping up here to the places menu. You can see here that we're running the Nemo file manager, which is the default of Linux Mint, I believe. And you'll also notice that we're running the Linux Mint uh, updater option. Now, uh, this isn't a Linux Mint spin-off or anything like that. It just borrows some of the tools. Um, now that's all on the back end. In terms of what the user sees, um, you get a file manager that is uh, that's pretty reminiscent of you know Windows going back as far as you possibly want. You've got tree view with this side panel here um, and everything that the user is presented straight up um, very much looks familiar to uh, to anybody that's used a computer over the last 10 years. Now contrast this to something like Nautilus which is very simple um, and it hides away a lot of the controls that power users expect um, in an effort to make uh, make it very simple for a new computer user, somebody that maybe has only used a, a tablet or a phone before to pick up and use. Now, um, this is a developing theme that you're going to see across uh, GNOME as a distribution, uh, sorry, as a desktop environment. Now, when it comes to um, the way that Anthony Norman or Pingai has uh, has tweaked the GNOME shell desktop environment to his own purposes, you'll kind of see that there's this uh, there's this middle ground that can be met through the use of extensions. And really, I guess that was the olive basket extended by the GNOME community is that because it is all based off uh, Java script, I believe, um, the GNOME shell is very tweakable if you know what you're doing. So that's what the community did. And they came up with lots and lots and lots of extensions. Now, um, again, this is going to be very, very much uh, focused on personal preference. So if at this point you're thinking to yourself, well, I kind of like what I see. You've got a menu here in the top panel with a lot of controls here just under a single click. To me, that's a fantastic thing to see um, because it presents the user with 
uh, a lot of what they would normally do with a very minimal amount of clicks. And to me, that, that is evidence of, of decent design. Now, what I will say though, is that you'll notice how a lot of the, the, the virtual desktop environments, for example, all the GNOME activity spaces are all integrated into this menu. And there is no way to bring up the default GNOME activities uh, view, which is where you kind of get that zoomed out look of everything that's running on your desktop at once, including everything that's on your different workspaces or GNOME activities. Now, this is a very, very intentional choice because the whole idea of GNOME activities makes a lot of sense if you're swiping and touching on a touchscreen. It doesn't make as much sense to the user that is mostly mouse and keyboard driven. Um, so you'll notice that here in the menu, it makes sense to be able to jump up here with your mouse, tap on the menu, and then uh, switch your workspaces using that. Now that is a fairly simple point and click. It's not obscured to the user at all, and it's not like they're gonna stumble upon, upon, uh, it's not like they're gonna stumble upon it accidentally by uh, you know mousing down here in the bottom corner or accidentally hitting the activities view and realizing they're on a completely different desktop, thinking everything uh, has uh, is gone. It kind of defaults to the idea that power users that are looking for it are going to be able to use their shortcuts to uh, to move around but uh, but for the average user who is um, who's only just wanting to, to use a single desktop um, then that's all they're going to be presented with okay so let's get back to talking about extensions uh, so just for those who are interested out there there are a lot of extensions running here by default in Pingai OS um, you'll notice there's app indicator support, there's audio switches built into the default, uh, built into the default menu here. So you can switch audio uh, outputs and inputs on demand. You'll notice that the default um, app switching interface is a cover flow type deal. Um, now, what you will notice is that uh, GNOME Tweaks keeps crashing. Every single time I, uh, I trigger one of these things, it, uh, it seems to want to crash, but bear with it, we'll just keep rolling for the moment. Um, you'll also notice that the, uh, the menu that, that he has uh, employed here is the GNO menu. And again, you'll notice it's crashed again. Um, and there's a bunch of other ones here as well, um, including some stuff for the weather and this dock here at the bottom and all of that fun stuff. So feel free to take notes in terms of um, what, uh, what extensions are running here, um, what they might do and, uh, and whether or not you want to use them in your, uh, in your system. But all of these are managed by GNOME Tweaks, which is a pretty standard app for a lot of GNOME users out there. Now. What, what I will say is that the overall, let's talk about overall workflow here, because if you came in, if you were dropped into Ping iOS as an operating system and you're in, and this is going to be the environment that you're going to work in, um, obviously the first thing you're probably going to do is go straight to the menu, realize that you've got a bunch of options there. And then, uh, and then from there, you've got to figure out, okay, well, is this like a Mac where it's going to put the file menu windows at the top here? If I open something up, no, it's not, but there is a menu system up here still. And again, this harkens back to what the vanilla GNOME project is doing by trying to integrate a lot of the menu options that people, uh, you know, access, especially power users into the top panel here. Okay, so for sake of example, we're gonna open up Gedit on the host system, which is, uh, which is Ubuntu uh, 18.04, but it's running uh, Unity. So I'm gonna open up Gedit here and we can have a look at what this uh, what this looks like in real life. So you can see here that there are very minimal options going on here in terms of what is exposed to the user. You have a new tab, you have open and you have save and that is it. Um, and even in the GNOME distributions, you'll, you'll notice the window controls are actually integrated into the menu here. Now for a brand new user, I don't know why they're opening a text editor, but it is what it is. For a brand new user, this could be um, this could be pretty simple to get your head around because there's not too much exposed. Now, the thing is, is that on GNOME, you will have a lot of the other options integrated into the top panel here by clicking on the name of the application. So there'll be uh, the activities button or something like that. And then right next to that, there'll be Gedit text editor sitting up here in the top panel. And then all of these menu options will be integrated underneath 
that menu. Does that make sense? I don't know if it does or not. Okay, let's jump back to Pingai and keep going. So when you jump onto the GNOME developer website and you have a look at some of their design principles, you'll notice that there's uh, some common themes that come up where you need to be putting the content first in the in whatever application that you're doing and uh, and that everything else should try to, should basically get out of the way. Uh, avoid interruptions. You should be able to provide quick and effective search, use configuration options sparingly, all of that kind of stuff. But it kind of flies in the face of what a lot of power users come to expect. And especially when it comes to more professional uh, level applications, uh, applications that by design have a lot that they can do, uh, this does kind of create a bit of a disconnect in terms of the community that wants to run these distributions, which oftentimes are software developers, uh, but also then the way that they're designing the interface is very much for, uh, for, um, for simple use cases. Um, and I guess Ping iOS is a great example of taking a, the GNOME desktop environment and tweaking it and tinkering with it to the point where you feel like you have more control back in your pocket. Now I know that this video is kind of ranting and rambling all over the place, but I'm really curious to hear what you guys think of GNOME's design direction in the comments below, because um, for me, it's it's an interesting evolution of watching them remove features for the sake of um, quote unquote efficiency, but then adding those features back in later, possibly in more obscure areas to try and, uh, you know, to try and patch the, uh, the void that they create in their in their power user um, user base, uh, because at the end of the day, it's developers and it's um, you know power users that are often using these distributions and using these desktop environments. Um, so, in terms of um, in terms of the choices that Pingai makes in Pingai OS 18.04, um, I think he's been pretty straightforward in terms of. Uh, you know, trying to maintain the same options that he's always offered in his distribution. And if you like that and you want to get on board with that, then uh, then this distribution is out there waiting for you. Um, it, it borrows a lot of the good stuff from GNOME in terms of uh, in terms of the aesthetics and and the clean lines and that kind of thing. But at the same time, it uh, it tweaks a lot. Uh, in terms of making it function the way that a power user would want, or at least somebody who likes to have a bit more control over their desktop. Now, what I will say is that if, of course, um, if you are interested in this as a distribution, you can jump onto um, you can jump onto Pingai's uh, website and have a look at the release notes, but you'll notice that there is quite a lot of tweaks that he's made um, out of the box and he outlines it all in this uh, in this post. So you can see that he's, uh, he's added some extra things to make it easier to install Windows games and a lot of this reflects what he personally wants out of an operating system. And he's just putting it out there in hopes that other people will also, uh, you know, find similar uh, shared common ground there. Um, so there's a lot of tweaks there to help install, uh, you know, gaming emulators uh, to be able to manage uh, video collections and all of that kind of stuff. Um, so if you identify with what Ping iOS is doing, then definitely go and check it out. Um, what I will say is, I think for me, it's got it's a little bit too heavily tweaked and it's not quite as minimal minimalist and focused as I would prefer. But let me know in the comments what you think about the overall design direction of GNOME uh, and what would be some of the key things that you would add into the way that GNOME uh, presents itself by default. And also let me know if you'd like to see a follow-up video to this in terms of exploring what a vanilla GNOME desktop looks like and some commentary around that. That about does it for this video. Um, definitely go and check out my comments about Ubuntu Unity if you haven't seen that video already. Um, and uh, yeah, stick around, give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you wanna see this content on a regular basis. And I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen.